Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. We're coming to you live on Facebook to give you this breaking and historic news. U.S. President Barack Obama has commuted the sentence of U.S. Army whistleblower Chelsea Manning, and he's also commuted the sentence of Puerto Rican independence fighter Os Oscar Lopez Rivera, which has gotten almost no attention in English language news. We'll, mention, we'll talk about that a little bit today, but we'll follow up on that story tomorrow. Um, now back to, back to Chelsea Manning. In 2010, Manning leaked classified files uh, to pro-transparency site WikiLeaks. Much of the time Manning already served was in solitary confinement. Manning was hospitalized several times, according to attorneys, after multiple suicide attempts. Manning, and we're going to show you his picture in just a second, is a former intelligence analyst in Iraq. He's serving a 35-year sentence after a 2013 military court convicted him of providing more than 700,000 documents, videos, diplomatic cables, and battlefield accounts to WikiLeaks. It was the biggest breach of classified materials in U.S. history. The leaks had impact across the world. They're credited with help, helping spark the Arab Spring. Um, we're now joined by Kevin Gastola to discuss this. He's the managing editor of Shadowproof, uh, co-host of, of a weekly podcast as well. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So, Kevin, um, reflect upon this for a moment. Um, the fact that Obama really made this surprise announcement, uh, we knew that uh, Chelsea Manning was in, the, the, uh, was in contention to receive this pardon. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it surprised many people considering Obama has waged an unprecedented war on whistleblowers, um, a war on leakers, and even journalists that, uh, that work with them. Um, so talk a little bit about the gravity of this announcement. Yeah, and just to add to the introduction, uh, I, I covered all of the court martial. I was one of like four or five journalists that covered all of Chelsea Manning's court martial at Fort Meade. And so I've been following her case closely uh, ever since uh, she was arrested, um, whether I was writing about it or not. And I think what happened here is very, very remarkable. Uh, something shifted with, within the national security establishment where people... Uh, convinced themselves that Chelsea Manning had done enough time, that she had taken responsibility for her actions, and that it was okay to commute her sentence and give her uh, what basically amounts to time served. And, and, and that's incredible to me. I, I think that's a tribute to all of the work of the people who have been saying free Chelsea Manning since she entered a jail cell. Uh, it's a tribute to some of the journalism that's been done. It's a tribute to some of the uh, few human rights organizations that were willing to speak up for her, although sometimes they didn't speak up for her about what she did, but just spoke up for her and, and, and treated her like a political prisoner and, and stood up for her human rights, which was critical. But I think that you're right. Barack Obama has has this record of this war on whistleblowers. And as we're talking about Chelsea Manning, uh, often uh, because uh, Edward Snowden came forward at the same time as Chelsea Manning went on trial, there's been this comparison of the two. And, and Edward Snowden was, treat, was treated like the good whistleblower by uh, people uh, when he revealed information about the NSA and Chelsea Manning was treated like a bad whistleblower because she leaked information to WikiLeaks and now we've seen this kind of a shift where the fact that Edward Snowden is in Russia and didn't face up for his actions actually works against him and Chelsea Manning to her credit because she went before a military court is getting out of prison and um, you know we, we you covered that trial extensively um, did she receive a fair trial in, in your view? I don't think that it was that fair of a trial because she wasn't able to put forward evidence in the courtroom about why she had made the choice that she made to disclose uh, information. So, she, so basically what happened is she ended up pleading guilty to a lot of the charges. Uh, we had a trial, but we had a, a, a sort of abbreviated trial. Um, it wasn't just a sentencing, but it was a shorter trial because she had pled guilty to some of the offenses, parts of the offenses. And so there were larger issues at stake, uh, such as whether she had aided the enemy. You know, the military went after her very, very zealously and made some very um, harsh arguments against her that went 
after her patriotism. You know, what went at whether she was a traitor or not, suggesting that these leaks had helped Al Qaeda, uh, that they had somehow somehow you could trace uh, all of these leaks to Osama bin Laden, and that they had found files on Osama bin Laden's. Uh, digital media when they raided his compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. And so this was very, very, I, I think, damaging to her reputation. We had uh, people there in the court, military prosecutors, who were suggesting that she maybe was no longer uh, much of an American because she had questions about whether you should um, worship the flag. Um, you know, s similar things to like, well, now we hear people talking about you know, uh, whether you, know, you should uh, kneel during the national anthem. It was that kind of thing with Chelsea that she had questions about how you should worship America while she was within the army, and they used that against her to paint her as a traitor. And so I don't think that she got as fair of a trial as she should have gotten, uh, but she was convicted. She received a 35-year sentence. Um, she was convicted under the Espionage Act. Uh, this president has indicted more individuals under the es Espionage Act than any other president in the history of this country, which is really something to consider. Uh, but, of course, this was a military justice case. Um, it's a little bit different from the federal court cases that have been brought against other whistleblowers. But the same regime under the Obama administration went after Chelsea Manning. And uh, Manning transitioned while in prison. Um, <clears throat> she suffered, you know, she faced solitary confinement. Um, she, she was treated, um, uh, the way she was treated was condemned by human rights organizations around the world. Um, can you comment about that, that, um, that uh, you know, she's still surviving um, all this, you know, what amounts to torture um, at the hands of her former employers? Yeah, go back to Quantico Marine Brig in 2011, and we had these reports. Uh, P.J. Crowley, who was a spokesperson for the State Department at the time, comes out and, and, and says something about Chelsea Manning's treatment. You had the U.N. Uh, Special Rapporteur on Torture calling her treatment cruel and inhuman uh, and, and, and making it uh, a part of the world's concerns. Uh, frankly, and, and embarrassing the Obama administration because there is this abuse happening to somebody who hadn't even been convicted of crimes yet. This was during pretrial detention that she was receiving this abuse. And that influenced the trial. Uh, we, we had a long section um, of the court-martial before we got to trial that just heard evidence for a number of days about how she had been abused so that we could have uh, credit uh, put into the, that she would have credit go toward her sentence. So she had time. She had 112 days taken off of her sentence uh, because she was abused at Quantico and then in, in solitary confinement conditions. And then fast forward to Leavenworth, Kansas, where she is right now and will be until May. She was put in solitary confinement as punishment um, because she committed suicide because she's struggling with mental health issues that the facility, frankly, has done little to address when people who advocate for her have said, please do something about this. This is really bad. This is, this is something where we're worried about her well-being. We don't know if she's going to be able to make it. And I think, frankly, Obama has saved Chelsea Manning. It's very possible that she would have died in Leavenworth Prison if he had not commuted her sentence. And, um, you know, the impact that uh, that Chelsea Manning made, you know, cannot be understated with these actions, which many have described as courageous, um, because with the, they helped spark um, the Arab Spring. Um, they helped, uh, you know, inspire people to revolt against autocratic rulers, uh, starting in Tunisia and across the world. And there, of course, there's that footage, um, the collateral murder footage. And we have that video, and we're going to play it. But it, it shows um, the U.S. military targeting civilians, targeting, targeting a Reuters journalist, and killing them for sport, it seems like. And no one was held accountable for those killings. When the state line, uh, let me know when you have it. Or shoot. Light them all up. Come on, fire. Hey, Roger. Two things. We need to move time now. All right, we just engaged all eight 
individuals. Yeah, we got two, we're, we're still firing. Roger. I got him. And so we're watching some of this footage. It is, uh, it is quite disturbing to see that. But again, no one was held accountable um, for those actions. Uh, Kevin, can you comment about that as well? Absolutely. That, that definitely colored my coverage of the court martial and especially the outcome, the, the verdict. The fact that uh, she was convicted of all of these offenses. And also, I want to say she was convicted of all of those offenses on July 30th, which the country celebrates, or at least our Congress, our, our government recognizes as National Whistleblower Appreciation Day. And I thought that was pretty ironic. And particularly, her case showed glaringly the, the disparity in justice. You know, the fact that you can blow the whistle on these sort of crimes, that you can reveal the wrongdoing that, are, that is going on as a result of our wars, uh, and the people who are responsible for torture, the people who are involved in committing crimes against humanity or war crimes, do not get hauled before a court. They do not be, they're not brought before a military judge. And yeah, uh, what she released has been tremendous for the world in coloring our understanding. I mean, the fact is, Reuters tried to get a copy of the collateral murder video, as we know it now, and they were not allowed to have a copy. Freedom of Information Act uh, rejected their request. They went through that process. It, they did not get a copy. Uh, the, these war logs, these, these military incident reports, gave a complete picture of what was happening on the ground in Afghanistan, in Iraq, showed exactly where things were, were, were playing out, um, revealed things like uh, you know, this task force that was going around and you know, murdering people. Um, and uh, it's the first time that we're, we're getting into like assassination squads that the Bush administration had, possible, ha had been using. And uh, these diplomatic cables, this tremendous trove of diplomatic cables that gave us a complete look at the way our diplomats work around the world and, and how they will work on behalf of corporations and, and, and how uh, they'll, they'll cozy up with dictators and, and seeing things like, you know, we're going to, uh, having Ali Abdullah Saleh in Yemen say to General Petraeus that he would say our bombs were from Yemen so that we didn't have to take responsibility for drone strikes. That was, th th these are huge revelations. And then there were even Guantanamo files. And we got to see all of the flawed intelligence, all of the fabricated intelligence, much of it that the U.S. military has on, uh, on the 779 men that were imprisoned at Guantanamo Bay. And now it's down to uh, you know, less than 100 people. And a lot of that is because, you know, she's contributed to this conversation about who these people were that were imprisoned at Guantanamo. And so all of this, everything is, is just a, a tremendous impact that Chelsea Manning had on the way we understand our world. And, uh, you know, a common refrain used to attack Chelsea Manning is that, you know, she's a traitor, um, that her actions risked lives, that they cost lives, in fact. But, um, you know, an interesting thing happened is that U.S. officials were forced to acknowledge that there's no evidence to date that the documents released led to anyone's death. Um, so, you know, you still, you still see it on social media and right wing and some even on the left say that, uh, you know, um, that, that Obama should not have commuted um, Chelsea Manning's sentence. Uh, can, you talk, can you respond to those, those, uh, those statements? Yeah, I've seen that uh, we can't uh, celebrate this because it'll be bad for uh, the U.S. Army's morale. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure people are suggesting that lives were put at risk and people died because of Chelsea Manning. I followed this trial, and I can tell you that there was never anything put in the public record during this trial about a person who was killed as a result of Chelsea Manning's disclosures. Now, there may have been secret evidence in the closed sessions. There was a closed part of the trial that the press and public were not allowed to see because it involved classified information. But 
it was always my conviction. I felt that if you were going to charge her with these serious offenses and put her behind bars for decades, that you needed to show evidence and declassify evidence of people's deaths. And I always thought that if somebody had died as a result of these disclosures, we would be hearing about it because our government would make sure that uh, we knew that that was why this was not a good thing for us to celebrate. And they never had a single individual that they could put out there as the example for why we needed to demonize WikiLeaks and or why we needed to not support and celebrate Chelsea Manning. And so now as we sit here talking about the commutation of Chelsea's sentence, there is not a single individual that anyone who is opposed to this action can cite because it just does not exist in the public record. Well, Kevin, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to link to uh, your work covering the trial of uh, Chelsea Manning, and we had we'd interviewed at the, he interviewed you at the time, so we'll link to that to those reports you uh, provided us. Um, and uh, again, um, Oscar Lopez Rivera has also uh, had his sentence commuted. He had uh, been in prison for 36 years. I'm reading from a report from Telesur um, for his struggle to free Puerto Rico from U.S. colonial rule. Um, he was part of the Armed Forces of National Liberation. He was captured in 1981. Um, he claimed he was protected by the Geneva Convention as a freedom fighter. Um, so we know that his uh, commutation has gone through too, but it's also worth mentioning that there's uh, other freedom fighters like Mumia Abu-Jamal, uh, former Black Panther, former journalist, who are still remain in prison. Uh, many have demanded his release. Others also like uh, Leonard Peltier, who is in dire health, facing dire health conditions, uh, part of the American Indian movement, um, also been in jail for decades and also yet to be a sentence commuted from President uh, Obama. But we're going to keep following uh, this story. Um, and Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. And thank you for joining us at The Real News. Uh, go to therealnews.com for our, for our full coverage on um, Chelsea Manning's case and the impact of its leaks. We've interviewed Kevin and uh, as well as Michael Ratner who was on our board and he passed away uh, last year. Uh, we'll link to those interviews as well. Thank you so much for joining us.